Next, what we want to do is isolate a bunch of small parts from our geometry. Remember, as the explosion happens, we'll have a lot of small nuts and bolts and little pieces flying off. Uh, if you can see by default, the way we received our geometry, we already have a group that is called small parts. I'm splitting it, but I feel that this is not enough. We still have a lot of uh, nuts and bolts that exist in the geometry that we can add to this group. So let's do that. Uh, I will use delete small uh, parts labs tool, but instead of deleting them, I will just group them in a separate group called selection. And let's see what we have here. Here is my selection. In the delete small, small parts, I can just control by area how large the pieces I want to be placed in the group. After that, I'm a little housekeeping. I'm deleting class attribute that was left there and I'm merging it back with my uh, small parts group. So this is what it was before, and this is what we have now. We're adding uh, quite a few more of those small pieces. And now we can create our small parts group. And we, if we are doing replace existing, then our group is overwritten. These are our new small parts. After that, let's add a name, metal small, because uh, later, if I want to isolate all the metal pieces, I like to have the word metal in the group because I will have metal large as well. It's just going to be easier for me uh, in the future. We are storing. Um, our name in the name array like before, so we always can refer back to the original geometry. We know where it came from. We are doing convex decomposition, again with quite high resolution, and here is in the end my cache. Let's test if everything is working here. If I look at my RBD bullet solver and I play it around, we have small pieces, large pieces, everything is working as expected. They are interacting. It does not seem to me like I have some really weird collisions. They might be bouncing a little bit too much, but I did not spend any time setting up anything in this bullet solver. So this is just uh, some vanilla simulation. Okay, but all those pieces, it look, uh, seems totally fine to me how they're interacting with the ground. The wheels are going to be pretty simple. We are not going to fracture or deform any of them. Let's just make sure that these are separate entities and that we have proper proxy geometries. So I'm creating a name attribute uh, from groups because those three wheels already grouped properly when we got the geometry. So if I visualize it, you can see we have three different names, three unique name attributes. As usual, we store it in our name org, and then we are doing a simple polyfill. And if you notice, because some of the tubes, they had holes in them. Let's just fix those holes with a polyfill, and then we fuse those pieces because notice the difference 59,000 points, and without the fuse, 220,000 points. So, this geometry is uh, not really that clean, so we need to fix that. After that, the usual, we're doing convex decomposition, and after that, saving it, um, packing, and saving it in a group called wheels. Let's check that our wheels are working. I'm going to the first frame, turning on my bullet solver, and let's drop those wheels on the ground and see if the collision geometry seems good. Yes, looks good to me. Perfect, we can move on. Now let's fracture the body of our helicopter. Remember our brief? The front part of the helicopter needs to come off and shatter in small pieces, hit the building. The rest of the helicopter stays as a whole as it falls, but don't forget this is metal, so we need to allow it to bend and have some uh, areas that will have dents in them. First, I want to split the inside part of the helicopter. And my logic here is when the explosion starts, we just said the front part is going to explode and shatter into pieces, but I don't want everything to just turn into small pieces. For example, these parts of the seats, maybe some boxes under the seats, I want them to stay whole so that we have a nice combination of small parts and something large that will be recognizable as, for example, a seat. So let's take care of that. 
Unfortunately, the geometry that comes in, we do not have so, uh, proper groups or names for those pieces, so this is some manual work we need to do. But fortunately, it's pretty simple. I'm just selecting here manual selection in the group, and I'm making sure that in the select menu, I turn on 3D connected geometry. This way I can easily access the part that I just told you about. So don't worry, I already did the work for you and you can view the groups that I selected. We have some seats, tops and bottom parts of the seats, and we have some boxes on the sides and on the bottom of the seats, both for left and right. So in the name, uh, in the end, when I use a node called name from group, let's see how it looks. We have the rest, the blue part is our metal, but we also have those pieces that I will treat separately. So here we are just creating convex decomposition and saving it and caching it out. So we have our all our large pieces here. After that, we'll continue for with those metal parts. Let me just turn off my name visualizer. As usual, we're saving our uh, name in name array, and then we are deleting name and class. Uh, this is needed so that later our Boolean doesn't get confused. I need to delete this uh, name attribute here. Don't worry, we saved it, but I want it gone for my later fracture. And on the right side, we have the rest of the metal that we split earlier. We are also adding a name to it. Uh, Let's see, these are the pieces that we have that come as separate 3D objects from the geometry. And same, we are storing those names into name rig, and same, we are deleting the name attribute. After that, here is the metal part of the helicopter, then, but now we can start fracturing. As usual, let's start with a little bit of a fuse. This is not always that I do, but in case of this geometry, I just know that we have some uh, pieces and some points that can help us optimize the geometry. 94,000 versus 97,000. But most likely, if you look through my setup and you will see a few like, the, like this, it means that later probably I was doing fracturing and I noticed that I started getting some artifacts on broken fractures and very often adding a fuse before fixes that for you. So that's why it is here. Then this is the same setup as we had before for our cutters. Simple grid, remesh, UV project, mountain. And we are copying this onto the points that we already scattered on the uh, body of the helicopter. Here were our points. Let's view the results of our Boolean. This is a simple Boolean shatter where we use the cutters at the second input. And as a result, that's what we have. This is quite interesting uh, shatter of our geometry and having such interesting uh, breakups will give us quite interesting bending of the metal. Let's clean up our geometry after this Boolean. We might have some unused points left somewhere. Let's check 151,637 uh, without the clean, after the clean 011. So we deleted about 600 points. Let's check that we did not break our UVs. Let's view our quick material. Make sure to turn on the textures in the viewport. And let's see if the numbers are coming through fine. This area, this uh, is occluded with another piece of the geometry. So don't worry about that. This is nothing wrong. This is the original texture. I double checked. We have some wording, some writing. It looks like our UVs are working properly. So let's create a name on it. Let me just turn off my material so it's easier for us to see. Uh, and the name for those pieces is metal large. Remember, we have metal small and we have metal large. So if we want all the metal parts, we just use metal word in the name. After that, uh, this is an interesting part because we want to split the front and the back. Remember, the back stays intact but can bend and the front breaks into pieces. So this is one of the techniques that I like using is I am packing everything, 
by using names. So now I have 557 points. All of the pieces that had unique name on it are packed. After that, I am using group expression. And because my helicopter is positioned, if I go space two to look at it from above and I turn on my grid, you can see that uh, my helicopter is positioned perfectly in the Z direction. So I can isolate a part of the helicopter by using position in Z. Uh, so you see, I am isolating all the packed pieces in the back and leaving uh, pieces in the front. Why did I pack them? Because if it was not packed, if I bypass it, then I will be isolating them in a straight line and some pieces are going to be partially isolated. This is not what I want. I want an interesting border like this. And after that, I'm unpacking it, but the group was already created. So now I can use this group and split by this group. Uh, note that all the pieces that I'm splitting are whole pieces with unique name attribute. No piece was broken in half. So now we have our tail group. And what I do is I already have a name attribute on it. I just add a word tail before the name. And I'm doing something very similar for the front part, where I add the word front. So now I have front metal large and tail metal large. And also here, create a group body front that I can use later. Merging it all back together, using convex decomposition, and um, caching it all out. Let's test that uh, all our constraint logic and our groups are working. So I'm looking at my out meta large fractured. I'm unpacking it and let's create some constraints. First, I will constrain the pieces in the tail. And all I'm doing is creating connection type surface points. And I'm using uh, the input group tail and I'm creating a tag tail pieces. That's it. And by very small five centimeter radius, I'm looking for points between the pieces. Then let's create some properties on those uh, constraints. And uh, by default, they are glue constraints, but pretty weak. A little bit of an impact is going to break them. And upon breaking, they will turn into soft constraints. And you can see that propagation iterations are quite high. So if one, uh, there is an impact, for example, here in this area, these constraints break, they will propagate, uh, the impact is going to propagate uh, far away and it's going to break the constraints nearby because that's what usually helps uh, happens with metal. If there is a dent, we will see some propagation around the area of the impact. Then we have our soft constraints that have a little bit of uh, stiffness in them. And then we have our uh, front uh, part where we're using only body front group and we are creating the same way um, surface point constraints and we are creating some properties on them but these constraints are going to be on the glue. Remember the front shutters, the back part stays uh, intact by bands. And let's run our solver and see what we got. So when the helicopter falls on the ground, what you can see is the front part shutters and the pieces are broken off, but the back part, uh, it, the constraints break, but they do not detach. So you can see some uh, broken areas, for example, here, but they stay intact. I'm using RBD deformed pieces. This is something that we will use in the end. So you can see now we start having some dents in the surface. You can see, for example, in the bottom, there are some dents happening now when the actual geometry is a little bit cracked. And there is one thing to note that uh, you will see that I did not set any plasticity on the constraints. I'm just going old school and I'm setting up this uh, fake plasticity in the RBD bullet solver itself. So if you go into the solver and you go to the constraints tab, in the second little tab, you will see that in my soft and glue constraints, I have a few rules here. I'm creating a simple timer for a few frames. And then as a constraint changes from glue to soft, I'm allowing it to be, you can see here, timer is set to three. I'm allowing it to be soft for only three frames. And after three frames, it will turn back into glue. 
So you can see everything is uh, annotated here. So this is the logic how I'm faking the um, um, plasticity. Sometimes I use plasticity in the constraints itself, but usually it takes me quite some time to fine tune. In this case, we don't have any metal really close to the camera. Everything is happening far away. And you can see I'm actually getting quite nice uh, jiggle of the tail here. I actually really like how the metal is behaving. So I like this setup and I like this uh, fake uh, plasticity that we have here in the bullet solver itself.